Good morning folks, we are in the GMC Acadia and we are about to set off to Alain. And here I am with my crew today which consists of James in the front. Please say hello James. Hello James. And as well as you can see better. And Ronaldo. Ronaldo, where are we going? We are going first to Jebel Hafid. Okay, and why are we going to Jebel Hafid? Usually where we test the cars for cooling HVAC performance. Okay, and we're driving the new GMC Acadia which actually isn't on sale yet, yes? driving so I'll say yes we are yes. Right cool I just pay attention to run the bottom that's always <laughs> a good idea so we'll check back in later once we're actually there so we finished our long drive from Dubai and we are now on Jebel Afit Road going up the mighty mountain one of the tallest points in the UAE in these GMC Acadias on this hot weather testing run and this is when we basically go up the hill at speed or slightly faster than what you would drive and see how these cars perform in this heat. It's actually not that hot today, it's about 43 degrees, but it's quite a dry heat and it's definitely unpleasant. I'm just gonna spin the camera around so you can see what we're talking about. We've got various Acadias here. This one's the Denali. Look at some of the other cars and some of the other people having a chit chat and a smoke or two. This one has the special envelope, so it's got lots of heat sensitive gear. quite a few cars and quite a hot day. We'll see how it turns out. On Jebel Afid Road, we are with the legendary Ronaldo, who you've probably seen in a few of our earlier videos, flying the ATSP. And we're now doing the fast run, Ronaldo, am I correct? The yeah. faster run. Yes, yeah, correct. So what are we doing? We're going downhill or uphill? We're going downhill just uh, uh, to get to the point where we start our run five. Uh, which is the more critical of course if you're on the cooling system. We're gonna do a kind of aggressive driving, mm -hmm. uh, a bit of what a regular customer would do. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we can we can monitor the, the cooling system and HVAC system for their performance. Mm -hmm. So typically how often do you come to this road? I come in for every single program that we launch in Middle East we had to do this uh, check. Mm -hmm. Of course, the cars they have been tested in Winnetown, back mm -hmm. wherever they are coming from, mm -hmm. but uh, nothing like the real world to test cars and make sure that everything is alright. Mm -hmm. So, when you're talking about going up Jabal of Faith, you're talking about different levels of driving. So, you have like an easier run where you go gentle up the road, just drive up it, and then you have a more aggressive run, and then you have an even more aggressive run when you close the roads and stuff. Uh, uh, yeah, you're correct. Uh, we do on regular uh, drive and we try to put as many people as possible like it's a uh, regular family mm -hmm. and also we do some uh, more aggressive drivings not to the next month of course because uh, here uh, we are always thinking about safety okay mm -hmm. but uh, this more aggressive driving is enough for us to understand if the car has some limitation or borderline so what is it about Jebel Hafid that makes it such a good place for GM to test cars uh, in fact, Middle East, it's more, most of the places are really uh, plain. Mm -hmm. So, Jebel Hafid is a mountain, and this is a really challenging mountain because we have sharp downhill now. <laughs> yeah. huh? We're going downhill, I can feel the G forces, we're going downhill. Yeah. And this has very sharp curves, isn't it? How many curves in Jebel Hafid? I'm not sure, but there are so many. You mean you've been here 6,000 times and you haven't counted them? Mm -hmm. I have not. <laughs> so, you say it's really stressful on the car, yes. the car doesn't get enough airflow. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, because they're having the sharp and the uh, inclination of the, the curves also. Mm -hmm. they, they go from 5 to 14 uh, percent, which is really challenging for the car. Mm -hmm. 5 to 14 percent, so yeah. that's like this much. Yeah. yeah. So based on the feedback from this hill, what sort of changes do you make? Is it mostly AC or are we talking overall performance, suspension, dynamic, chassis, I mean, what are you testing? No, the, we are in here most for cooling and HVAC system. So what's HVAC for those people who don't understand what HVAC is? Uh, HVAC comes first when, if the car, you overheat it. Mm -hmm. The first effect will be the HVAC because the HVAC will be uh, cut off. Yeah. So here we are making sure that the HVAC is not cut off, even drive aggressively, mm -hmm. and also we measure with our thermocouples, we measure the temperatures What's of the vents. Thermocouples is uh, it's like a thermometer, but uh, it's uh, two wires together that we can measure temperatures of 
200, 300 degrees. Yeah. We got a laptop plugged in as well, which you can't see here, but we have in the first one. What does that do? Uh, laptop uh, records all the data that is running on the bus of the car, all the modules they are communicating. Mm -hmm. So if I want to capture any data there, I can just set up my software and I can have a screen where I record it from the bottom to the top. So if I plug in my laptop, will I get the same data or you need special software? No, we, we need a special permission and software to access the buzz of the car. Yeah, and then you can pretty much find out what's going on with the car. Can you turn things on and off? Yes, I can. I can do whatever I want. Mm -hmm. Okay, and even the engineers back in, in the, the home room mm -hmm. where they design the cars, yeah. they can send us files that we can open mm -hmm. on this software and they can monitor whatever they want and mm -hmm. turn on, turn off any of the, the, the sensors and things. They can actually test it from mm -hmm. remotely in the mm -hmm. car. Yeah. Have any of the engineers ever? Um, <clears throat> Oh yeah. yeah, especially especially the interns when they first come here, they think that they are tough. Yeah. And we look behind it, they are just guides <laughs> Why? asking the place of the car. And so you're just bringing the interns out here to torture them. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. that's like a baptism. A baptism of fire. We're doing a U-turn. Why are we doing I a U-turn? So. We shall get back to you in a second. Now we're starting the first one up the hill. Drive it is best. Let's see if you can break my camera. Well, it's quite cool to be able to do this to see how you guys test the cars because so many people ask us, you know, I don't really think anything happens in the middle. I don't think they really test the cars, but you guys are really putting this car through its paces. You're really showing the car what it can do and also pushing it to its limit. Does it affect the car? I mean, a lot of people are scared to even drive on such they feel their car will get damaged. But it doesn't really affect the car that much, does it? It's safe to do this if you're an experienced driver. If you know what you're doing, it's safe. There's no damage to the car. The table of feet, what does it do to brakes? When you're going down, when you go down, if you just rely on the brakes, yeah. you're probably doing the wrong thing and you're going to probably have a problem. So, what's your first sign? that the brakes are going to going back. Is it the foot goes to the floor no, or no 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 it doesn't break you start to, to feel that the performance of the brake is it's not the same. Well thank you very much. We've had a pretty fun educational trip up her feet up and down it. So we shall now talk to some people who actually work on the car and see what they do. Stay tuned. And you see <laughs> my gauge here didn't go even after the half which you is really good. But yeah it's about half so and that's a real gauge. Yeah. Cool. Well, thank you very much, Ronaldo. So we really took these cars and put them to the test yesterday, going up Jebel Afid and pounding them up and down till they got really, really hot. But now we're in Liva, the Qasr al Sarab Hotel, quite a bit of distance away. And here to tell us why we're here is Daniel Oden, Regional Product Manager for GM. Good morning, Daniel. Good morning. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm here with the Model Year 17 Acadia. We've been testing this Acadia all summer long, so we've had lots of exposure to the vehicle. and. Um, I have to say it's, a, it's, it's performing well and we've received a, a lot of good comments on the vehicle from our testing. So why have we come all the way out to Liwa? It's pretty much on the other side of the country, close to the Saudi border. What's the point of coming out here? Ah, Liwa. Well, we like to come to Liwa because we get the hot desert temperatures, so it puts a lot of strain on the AC um, system of the vehicle and also powertrain cooling. And we like to capture some of that data because we get, I think we got data up to, or temperatures up to 49 degrees Celsius yesterday. So we instrument the vehicles, just some basic instrumentation just to capture vent temperature, uh, breath temperature, what, what the passengers in the vehicle, what type of um, comfort they have in the interior of the vehicle. And um, then we just drive the vehicle like a normal customer and to understand what, what the cooling capability of the vehicle is. What sort of mileage are we talking about here? Let's see, yesterday we did 500 kilometers and um, today I think we have another four or 500 kilometers. So just to be clear, you're not trying to drive the cars to break them, you're trying to see how the things stand up to the kind of usage the customers do. Correct. We're not, we're not doing durability testing, we're, we're not doing end-of-life testing. We're um, simply trying to put the car, car through a normal test cycle, what a normal customer would do with the vehicle, to understand how it's going to meet their requirements. And um, yeah, it, it's, it's nothing that, uh, we're not going to take it off-road and take it across the sand dunes. 
Although you have done that before with other vehicles and this vehicle actually, have you? I can neither deny or... Um, <laughs> Excellent. No, we, it, it depends on the vehicle. If it's uh, maybe like a, a pickup truck or a SUV, we'll take it off-road and, and put it through its paces on the desert. Okay, so you mentioned that these cars are rigged up. Next, let's take a look at the kind of things you attach to these cars. All right. So this is a saleable vehicle. We call it saleable. It's pre-production, meaning it's not the final version of the vehicle. We still have uh, another week before the production vehicles are built. But um, this is a, we call it a saleable vehicle. And what we do is um, when we first receive the vehicle, we go through all the gaps and flush, the, flush panel fits and make sure that they are um, flush. There's no, uh, we call them A gap or B gap, but just basically check out the vehicle in terms of gaps, flushness of all the panels. And, and that way we're trying to um, verify that the build process is robust in terms of panel, panel alignment, panel fitment. Okay. And then um, obviously we do our safety checks in the morning. We're always checking the fluids and um, other, other vital fluids just to make sure the vehicle's um, not losing so you don't visit the dealer, you have your own special facility for maintaining all these kinds of cars? Correct. What we, what we like to do after we expose the vehicles uh, on a weekly basis, we take them into the workshop, put them on a hoist, check the, the wire harnesses, make sure that they're not rubbing, chafing, um, check all the lines, make sure there's no witness marks in terms of um, um, the vehicle getting you know, loose clips or anything like that. I can't help but notice there's this really weird periscope type attachment up here. What's happening with this thing? Yeah, that's our that's our ambient, um, our thermocouple for ambient temperature. So a thermocouple for the terminally stupid, what does that mean? <laughs> so all we're doing is trying to measure the um, temperature of the vehicle. When it's, it's a fancy down. thermometer. It's a fancy thermometer. It, it is. is. It, 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 absolutely. And John Mondario will put it there. And we also have it instrumented inside so we can compare the outside temperature, the vent temperatures to the breath temperature. I keep saying breath temperature. I'll show you what it is. Yeah. So this is not a finished car. This vehicle is saleable, but what we'll do is if there's any improvements, if there's any improvements, let's say you found an issue with, um, I don't know, let's say this door sill, um, and you, cha you made a, a change to this part before production, then this vehicle would have to, have to be upgraded to that production part. So after we're done testing, we take all the the changes that have been made for SORP units or mm. production units and get those parts over here to the Middle East and retrofit the entire vehicle. All right. So, so you wanted to see our uh, instrumentation. It's really basic. This is our fancy thermometer. And what we like to do is we like to grab a vent temperature and then we call, I think I mentioned this, but the breath temperature. Because sometimes what we find is you could have a really cold vent temperature, but you can't get the air exactly where you need it. So we like to measure the breath temperature, and that's the temperature where your body feels it. Mm -hmm. And um, that has the most impact in terms of how the vehicle is performing AC-wise. And um, the, whole, the whole goal of this testing is to make sure the car is ready and right for the customer. And anything that, um, if we find something, if we have an issue that we have to get resolved, we quickly relay that back to the program team, whether it's in <clears throat> North America or the other design centers that we have and then that issue gets resolved before the actual production of the vehicle begins. So when you say resolve, what do they do? Do they roll out a fix to send you a new car? How exactly does the process work? It depends on the issue. Um, so if it's an HVAC issue, for example? HVAC, well, then you have to make the decision, is the vehicle ready for the customer? And that's a tough decision you have to make, and you get the team involved, and, um, and you, the alternatives are you have to come up with a solution before production, or you have to delay production. And um, that's when it gets serious. That's when everybody gets on the conference calls and has these uh, very a lot of meetings, a lot of tense meetings. I suspect. Yeah, it, it gets uh, it gets tough. But you know what? You put the customer in the center of that decision make, making matrix. You say, okay, what's the right thing for the customer? And yeah. um, so, and when you look at made. these kinds of cars being made and so on, how much of this process happens before and after the car is on sale? Do you just guys stop, or do you carry on testing and so on for quality and reliability? No, after we after the vehicle goes on sale, we have a uh, it's called a early warning system. So any type of issue that the dealers see with the vehicle gets reported straight to my team, and then we get that issue in front of engineering. And it's um, it's kind of like an escalated issue resolution meeting. So you get the whole team, the program team, gets the list of early issues, so we can get them resolved quickly as as possible. Okay. 
So basically you're continuously working over the life cycle of the vehicle, making small changes. So the car is never really done, is it? It's always a work in progress and there are always improvements to be made. Yeah, it's just like life. You know, we're always trying to improve ourselves and we're always trying to improve the cars. So it's never done and um, it's. I think that's the... Uh, the great thing about the speaking of never done you told yesterday to me that you've done a huge amount of cars this year at GM just can you reel off some of the programs you worked on this year which is a bit of a record I think yeah I think it was a record we were very busy this year first we started off with the uh, Camaro and mm. then we had the uh, the MCM or uh, mid-cycle enhancement of the Captiva and we had the Spark then the CTS or CT6 XT5 these are Cadillac programs then we had the Malibu which is currently ongoing and now the Acadia and so we were busy this year, but it's been, it's, these are very nice vehicles. So it's been really re rewarding in that respect. Even so, even with the nicest vehicle in the world, you're still talking about spending weeks and weeks on the road. Weeks and weeks of mile accu accumulation. We've had, I believe we've had over 40 or 50 vehicles on the road here this summer. And, uh, how big is your team again? <laughs> we we drive five cars at one time, so it's it's. You guys are constant on the road, so you yeah. know where every petrol station is, every sandwich, every burger yeah. from here to Lewa. We got um, yeah, we get lots of exposure to the UAE roads, and we we try to take them into Oman as well, get some different um, road conditions. But um, you know, again, it's it's for the customer, and we try to uh, we try to iron out any bugs, and uh, before production vehicles are built. So after all these years of doing this job, do you still enjoy it? You still get up in the morning and say, okay, I'm really enjoying being an engineer and looking into sort of nerdy details of car making? Oh yeah, I mean, look where we are today. We're, we're in a beautiful uh, beautiful hotel, beautiful location, and uh, yeah, it's so rewarding, so I enjoy it. Cool, well thanks a lot for your time, Dan, and hopefully you guys get to keep improving cars for years to come. All right, thank you. Enjoyed it.